Hello, it's Scott Manley here, once again on the waterfront in San Francisco making one of these, you know, stupid little science videos, basically. Uh, kind of overcast. A wise man, Mark Twain, once said that uh, the coldest winter he'd ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. And, you know, we have a reputation because the bay tends to suck cold in the air off the Pacific and give us fog and overcast skies, but uh, otherwise uh, the weather's quite pleasant, let's say. Anyway, uh, I was going to talk more about naming things. As I already mentioned, you can't name stars because pretty much they're considered to be beyond the, the realm of human, uh, you know, human characterization, I guess. You know, perhaps they have someone living around them that have, has their own name. Um, anyway, point is, regardless how much money you send to places like starregistrynamingservice.com, you can't name a star that will be accepted by the IAU. However, for objects in the back in our backyard, in our relative backyard, I mean, it's still a long way, the solar system has all sorts of minor bodies which do get human names. Now, starting out with comets, comets are named after the discoverer. So if you want to have a comet with a specific name, you pretty much need to change your name before you discover it, which is kind of hard. Um, you can, if you discover moons around planets, the moons are supposed to be given names that are thematically appropriate to their parent body. So, for example, moons of Jupiter, when they're discovered, are named after Jupiter's lovers, or daughters, or family, or anyone related to Jupiter or Zeus. There's now enough of them that we kind of cross-pollinate between Greek and Roman mythology. Now, asteroids are the one remaining realm where you can actually pick a name. If you discover an object, then initially it gets a name that's something like 1997 XF11, and that's basically a year with some timing information uh, that lets you figure out roughly when it was discovered, what week it was discovered, and what order it was discovered. And that's a provisional designation. That is, it keeps that name until you have got enough orbital data on it so that you can plot its orbit forwards with some accuracy and not confuse it with other potential future bodies, right? At that point, Typically, after four oppositions, you'll have enough data. At that point, you it will get given a number by the IAU. And, of course, numbered asteroids are growing all the time as there more and more data comes in. Now, once it gets a numerical designation, you as a discoverer have the possibility of suggesting a name for it. Now, at that point, uh, there, there's certain limitations on what things may be named after. Uh, but generally, it, it's a... It's a free-for-all, more or less. People name it after themselves and their wife and their kids and their pets. Um, there are asteroids named after, like the Beatles. There's some named after fictional characters, for example. But uh, the one thing, the big restriction, I believe, is on politicians and or people principally known for military or political activity, where they're supposed to have been dead for 100 years before the name will be accepted. So that's why there's an asteroid for... George Washington, but there isn't an asteroid for Winston Churchill because he won't be eligible for naming until, you know, the mid, the, until like 50 years from now or thereabouts. So yeah, if you want to name an object, if you want to name a planet after something, go out and discover an asteroid and maybe uh, you'll be lucky and you'll have uh, the asteroid insert name here. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.